Cori Bush is being interviewed from, I believe, the basement of the Capitol because they were under lockdown and with such clarity and such, I mean, it was just, uh, it, was, it, was, it was, her preacher was coming out in her. She talked about the injustices. She talked about what was happening. And for her to be ready, because she knew this was coming. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't come up with this last night. She knew that they were organizing because they announced it. And she created this It wasn't this exactly a secret. It wasn't a secret, because I saw these people say, well, why did she write it the day before? Because they were announcing it. Maybe the cops should have noticed that, too. So let's play the clip of Cori Bush, because I was brought to tears listening to her on NPR earlier, and then she uh, uh, went on, on air. Uh, do we have that clip, Dorsey? And had it been people who look like me, had it been the same amount of people, but had they been black and brown, we wouldn't have made it up those steps. We wouldn't have made it to be able to get into the door and, bu and bust windows and go put our feet up on desk of Congress members. We wouldn't have made it that far. We would have been shot. Yeah. We would have been tear gas. We would rubber bullets. That would have happened yeah. before we made it there. We need to call it what it is. It's white supremacy. It was white privilege. And it was the call of our president. And it was encouraged by our Republican colleagues and that is why every single one of them especially because they have been the ones trying to steal this election that's why we are calling for them to be removed they should not be seated ditto <laughs> i mean she laid it out i mean so i mean what what i do like though is that uh what the congresswoman said has been um, amplified and um, stated so strongly by so many people. And I gotta tell you, as a, as a black man of 50 years, this is really the first time in my life where I've seen non-politicized or even recently politicized white people say what most black people have been saying forever, which is, oh, that's messed up. If you know if there were black people, these are white people. Like we don't, I mean, I'm, I'm not used to that level of kind of almost consensus. And there's no one in my sphere other than under the dome and in Harrisburg where people would say otherwise. And I understand I live in a bubble, but I, I do reach out. So that's, that's kind of the silver lining that there's no question. Well, I wonder if they would have been treated the same way if they're black. So, but that's so basic. We need to take it a step up. And so here's, the, here's the, where the teaching moment comes in for me. What is our collective responsibility beyond what happened in Capitol Hill? beyond what happened with the, the process of certifying this election or accepting the, the electoral votes, beyond the transition, uh, the peaceful transition to, uh, of power, right? What is the collective responsibility of white people to have these very difficult conversations with other white people in positions of power to say, this would not have happened uh, without uh, systemic white privilege, right? Weaponized in the, in the most racial way and to make sure this doesn't happen again because black people really can't be in the room when that happens. I mean, we could, but it's not our responsibility. Thanks for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. It's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.